Hi, everyone, and welcome to the session. Elastic is a leader in monitoring solutions with many tools in place to provide detailed observability for all types of environments at scale. This includes cloud providers such as Microsoft Azure, one of the largest cloud providers out there. Customers run a multitude of workloads on Azure, and gaining visibility to those systems and the Azure platform itself helps organizations make use of their data by keeping systems healthy. In this presentation, we'll cover how to easily deploy Elastic on Azure and also begin to monitor your environment. You may have heard Elastic and Microsoft have fostered a strong partnership that integrates Elastic directly into the Azure console. This provides customers of both Elastic and Microsoft with an extremely simple user experience with deep integration into the Azure ecosystem. And we've just scratched the surface here. Together, we're going to build even more. So when it comes to running Elasticsearch on Azure, it can be deployed in a number of different ways. The recently announced native integration allows you to easily deploy Elastic as a native service in Azure. With just a few clicks, you can create an Elasticsearch resource and begin streaming data to it. Alternatively, there are some self-managed options for deploying Elastic if you need the extra customization, but at the cost of more management overhead. This includes deploying from our ARM template from the marketplace or simply downloading Elastic and deploying it into your own VMs or containers. But in this session, we'll focus on the native integration. So what does native integration mean? Well, Elastic is available in the Azure portal as a native resource. That means just as you would search for and create virtual machine resources, you can do the same with Elastic, all within the Azure portal without ever having to navigate away. There's also consolidated billing where all your Elastic usage charges are consolidated on your Azure bill, so you don't need to configure payment outside of Azure. If you have a committed spend agreement with Azure, you can draw down from that for your Elastic usage as well. The native integration also provides simplified monitoring. You can click to configure monitoring for Azure services and use Elastic to monitor your Azure environment and your virtual machines. No need to manually set up an agent of any kind. And it's secure. The integration supports Azure Private Link, meaning you can secure your Elasticsearch resource by limiting connectivity to only your Azure resources for improved security without exposing Elastic to the public internet. So by the end of this session, here's what we'll have accomplished. You'll deploy Elasticsearch. We'll stream Azure platform logs over to your new Elasticsearch instance. We'll set up monitoring for some virtual machines. And we'll explore Elastic so you can see what's possible with your own data. A few, a few prereqs if you're actually following along. You'll need to be set up with the owner role for the subscription you want to deploy Elasticsearch into. You'll also need to ensure that your subscription has valid billing information. Now let's dive in. To get started, first log into Azure, then search for Elasticsearch in the Azure search bar, and then you'll see Elasticsearch under services. Click into that to get started. Now you're seeing the Create Elastic Source Resource page. This is really, really familiar, and it's similar to every other Create Resource page with, within the Azure portal. Here, you can give your cluster a name and select the region in which you want to deploy into. You can also see the default size and price, which you can change after you create the actual resource. Next, you can configure to send Azure platform logs into your cluster. If you select the checkboxes, Subscription activity logs and resource diagnostic logs will be streamed to your cluster. You can also fine tune these logs to limit them by specific resources by fine tuning them by using the tag rules as well. You can also configure th those same log settings with, within a particular resource as well, such as a particular Kubernetes cluster. To do that, you'll find Elasticsearch as a new destination option under the diagnostic settings of that particular resource. So back to creating our resource. The last step is to simply click on the Create button. Once you click Create, Azure will kick off the creation process, and your Elasticsearch resource will be ready in just about five minutes. Once the resource has spun up, you'll see the overview page. Here, you can easily see the status, the version, the size, and other relevant fields related to your Elasticsearch cluster. You can click into Kibana, the link on the right, and that'll SSO you into Elastic so you can explore Elasticsearch. 
There's also a link to Elastic Cloud, which is the management interface of Elastic. Here, you can resize your cluster and do additional con configuration as well. So next, <clears throat> we're going to monitor some virtual machines. So sticking around in the Elasticsearch page in Azure, you can click into the virtual machines tab on the left. Once you click on this tab, you'll see a list of all virtual machines running. So click on the VMs that you want to monitor and then click on install extension at the top. Once you click on install extension, Azure will install a VM extension and then begin to start streaming logs and metrics over to Elastic. By default, we'll collect the system logs. Pretty easy, wasn't it? So let's just recap what we just did. We deployed Elasticsearch. We've configured platform logs to stream to your Elasticsearch cluster. And we've just set up monitoring for a few virtual machines as well. So now let's explore Elastic. I'm going to switch over to a demo now. So within Elastic, you'll see the, Elast the Elastic homepage. Elastic supports a number of different use cases, such as enterprise search, observability, security, and Kibana for analytics as well. Since we're monitoring the Azure platform and some virtual machines, we're going to focus more on observability here. So you can click into observability, or if you click in the left nav, scroll down, you'll see something called metrics. Let's click into metrics. So by default, the metrics or the inventory screen shows all VMs that you're monitoring. So in my test instance, I've already spun up the Elastic VM agent or extension for a couple of VMs. So here you can get a quick snapshot of all the VMs that are currently running. You can configure which metric shows by default here. So if I want to see, for example, memory usage, I can just click into that and get a quick snapshot. Let's just stick with CPU for now. By default, there isn't any grouping, but if you want to, you can add a you can group by a particular field. So for example, if you want to see all your resources by a particular region on Azure, just pick cloud.region. Okay. So let's click into one of these VMs and see what we can see in Elastic. So I'll click on App Server. So if you click into App Server, you'll start to see some metrics. So here by default, we collect a, a lot of different metrics right out of the box between CPU, memory, network in and out, and things like that. So this gets updated. This is getting streamed from data that's that the VM extension or the Elastic agent is sending over. Next, you can click on logs and you can get to see a, a tailed view of all the logs that this particular host is sending over to Elastic. If you want, you can also open up the log viewer to see a dedicated screen where you can do some highlights and some deeper queries into logs that are coming your way. The processes tab shows active processes and their status. Uh, on the VM that are currently running. And the metadata tab shows you some uh, information about the cloud provider, the host, and other things like that related to the host that's being monitored. So here you can see that this is on Azure and this particular region and with this particular agent. What's also interesting as well is if you want, you can also from this tab set up an alert. So let's see what that looks like. So if I click on create inventory rule and say I type in CPU alert, and I'll scroll down a bit. And right now it shows me a snapshot, a quick history of, my, of the CPU of this particular host. So if I want to, I can configure an alert to be sent out if my CPU goes above a certain threshold. For illustration purposes, I'll just pick 1.3%. So now the graph gets updated. So you can kind of see how often, depending on your graph, that this alert might actually trigger for. You could also select to alert you if there's no data coming in. So if your host does go down or if there's other, some other system issue, you'll still get alerted. You can add additional filters if you want to. So this filter is filtering for a particular VM. You can add some more filters if you want to filter by a particular region or resource group or anything else like that as well. Then you can pick a destination. So I'll choose an email alert. 
I'll send this to myself and I'll call it CPU warning. And then all I have to do is hit save and then Elastic will send me an email every time this particular host CPU goes above the threshold that I specified here. Super easy to set up. What's also interesting that you can do with the data that's coming in from Azure is anomalies. So beforehand, I set up a few um, machine learning jobs, which you can do with just a few clicks. And once you do that, Elastic will run some, some, some models across some of the data that's already stored in your cluster. And it'll come back with a few different, different anomalies that it can detect, along with a severity ranking as well. So you can explore these in more detail. So let's look at this one here, memory usage. Came back with a score of 87. So I'm gonna click in the overflow, overflow menu and click open an anomaly explorer. So this takes you to the, one of the machine learning pages. This graph here shows you a legend of, this, of the severity. The higher the severity, the higher the number, the higher the severity. And oh, this bar here just shows you an overall uh, severity ranking depending on all the hosts that are filtered here. So let's look at my, my app server here. So here, it came back with a score of 84. Let me click into this. And what this does is if you just click into it, it shows you a snapshot of that time range and, and the, the memory usage in that time range as well. The red dot highlights the spike that, that was detected. And it also gives you an idea of what the typical memory usage was expected at, at that time, taking into account C seasonality and things like that as well. Very handy. So that's a quick snapshot into some of the things you can do with the monitoring of virtual machines once it's in your data. Next, we'll have a look at platform logs. So as you recall, I started to configure to stream Azure platform logs into my cluster as well. So one great place to go to is Discover on the left-hand side. So I have a pre-filtered pre search and in this search, I set up a few columns, but you can kind of fine tune and tweak the presentation as you see fit. And here you can, get a, you can see a quick snapshot of all the different log records or documents that are streaming in. So I'm, I'm viewing by resource name and by resource type. And there's a few other fields that I've also filtered as well, or I showed the column for as well. So if you click into one of the documents, you can see some more data about that. So here, let's expand one of my Kubernetes cluster. It's uh, spitting out some diagnostic logs, and you can see some more information about it. Okay. You can also quickly search for a particular resource as well. So I'm going to let the auto filter do its magic. And I have a Spring Cloud instance, so let's see what that looks like as well. So the platform logs and resource logs for Spring Cloud are also being streamed here. And just as I saw the logs for my Kubernetes cluster, I can also expand the, the Spring Cloud logs as well. Okay. There's also a dashboard specific to Spring Cloud as well. So we can explore to see what that looks like. And here's a quick snapshot of the activity here. And that was a quick overview of what you can do with Azure platform logs and virtual machine logs and metrics in Elastic. Now let's go back to the presentation. So that sums up how quickly you can get started with monitoring on Azure using Elasticsearch. There's a lot more to explore with Elastic, so don't hesitate to explore on your own. Read through our documentation and tutorials, or even contact our onboarding specialist or support team if you have any questions at all. And if you're interested in knowing what else you can do with Elastic and Microsoft, I recommend checking out our newly published ebook that covers just that. There's lots of great information in there on how to integrate Elastic with other Microsoft products, 
such as Teams, Office 365, SharePoint, and others. Lastly, if you have any feedback about what you just saw or about the native integration, we'd love to hear it. Visit the URL and your feedback will make its way directly to the Microsoft and Elastic engineering teams. And with that, a huge thank you for attending this session. Enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you.